program. It is 8.10 and sit back, enjoy, get your wine or your popcorn or both and get going. <laughs> they go together. You got, if you have white wine, you need kettle corn. <laughs> Would you like to start sharing, John? Yes. Okay, here, here's the title. Everybody see it? Okay. Yes. Great. And and it's really slow for some reason here. There we go. So C and G. I'd never uh, never done anything with them before at this point, and our friend uh, Chuck suggested that I, uh, I look. So I looked and I saw an auction coming up and I knew I'd have to do some, shall we say, gymnastics to um, <laughs> be able to get a paddle number. And um, so I went right to their site and it looked like everything was fine. And then I went to, to try to bid on a lot and I couldn't bid. Mm. And so I called them and they go, no, no, you got to be approved. I said, approved? <laughs> and they said, yeah, you got to give us names of people that you bought from before and who they are and, and all of this. And I, I started making a list up and um, I sent to them and, and they said, oh, uh, yeah, what, what level do you want? <laughs> I gave him Chuck's name, so I, he's, he's in pretty tight with them. Um, so that, that got me in. So just be aware, I, I was putting that up there, that you don't get in immediately into a lot of these national auction sites. You have to have um, uh, good backing and, and stuff to, uh, to get into it. So the, the auction was number... Uh, 489. It was an e auction only, and the lot I was interested in was 868, and um, there were four Roman imperial coins, and we'll look at four coins. First was a. Uh, there's the obverse. It's Devo Caro. Caro, I guess be better pronunciation. And there's the reverse. And you notice the XXI, and that's not for Scott Feibush. Uh, it means that there were 21 of these to the, uh, to the gold denomination. Um, the um, attribution for it. Uh, I affectionately call it an ant because pronunciation of that, that is far beyond me. <laughs> and, uh, Keros. And it's uh, from Antioch, and it was um, done after he was uh, dead. Mm -hmm. uh, the Rick number came from volume five, uh, number two. There's two, uh, two sections of the volume five Rick, and that's Roman imperial coinage. It's all done out of the uh, uh, coins from the British Museum and other coins that were known in the uh, uh, different museums as well. Uh, came from Antioch and it was coin 126 of uh, Karos. The Avers uh, inscription, as we had spoken earlier, was Devo Karo and AVG is for um, Emperor. And then uh, print of, uh, the reverse. Uh, they give it a, a bus uh, letter and then the um, definition of the bust is in the beginning part of the uh, the emperor in this volume. So it was a radiated head and um, the reverse right was the head. The reverse has an eagle standing facing and looking left. And there was a delta in right uh, field and XXI in the exurge. Second coin, here we go. It's uh, Ser Serena and she's the wife of um, Aurelian. Uh, reverse. 
And now uh, here's the attribution here. Uh, you can see that there aren't too many coins attributed to her. So this is number six from Rome. And you get the, uh, the obverse and the, the reverse uh, um, names and, and, and uh, well, it's, it's like the newspaper of the day. There, there's things on there that lead to the general public knowing something about it. So the, the inscription would be for people that were able to read it. And then there were the, uh, the lettering for other things We'll get into that later on. And then there is the, the picture for those that were, uh, were just looking to, to find out what it was. Uh, th this was a bust bee, uh, diademed and uh, draped right, facing right, and without a crescent. Now, the without a crescent and the denarii go together. The, the ant is a double denarii, and there's generally something that denotes that on each one of the coins. Generally, if it's an emperor, it's a uh, affectionately known as a spiky crown. And with the, uh, the ladies, it's on a crescent underneath the, uh, the bust of the, uh, um, the one that's uh, served. Reverse has Venus standing left holding uh, a seated figure, and the thought was it was probably Cupid, in the right hand, in the scepter, in the left hand, and S in the exerge. The third one, we're getting closer here to, uh, to what I was looking for, is Robus, and you can see that he's in a little bit of ornate uh, clothing, and he has a scepter in his hand at this mm -hmm. point. Reverse, we've got a... Uh, a temple, and we've got um, a goddess in the temple. And again, you're seeing the XXI and the Q, and that would denote um, denomination type things and which of the Afakina it was uh, made from. So we've got the attribution for here. We've got, uh, it's an ant from Probus, a Probus from uh, uh, Sisica. And it's again out of uh, volume five. And now you see that there's, this is 737 coins. And this is just out of Sisica. So Probus had many, many more coins than, uh, than uh, a lot of the other emperors at this point. And you, you see a very intricate um, uh, lettering here and, and it all has to do with uh, titles and stuff of Probus. And you see the AVG again, he was the, the emperor at that point. <laughs> and the reverse is uh, 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 about the temple. And it's a bust, H. And that means that it was irradiated. So we know it's the, the double. So we're back to ant with that, just by the radiate. And the bust left uh, an imperial mantle holding the scepter and surmounted by an eagle and the reverse is Roma seated in the temple holding victory in a, a, a scepter and then XXIQ in, uh, in the surge. Now, why did I bid on this lot? We're looking at Probus and that's Rick volume five, second part and it's Tensium and it's 516. There are quite a few of the Probus coins that ended up in a series of coins that had things buried in them. Um, this was a, a very unique thing at this point and pretty intricate in how they did it. Uh, a little bit further on at the end of how we can uh, can relate all these together. We're talking about coins now that the average person would be holding that they wouldn't know what the letters are. 
they would just see them as marks on the coin. And they bury something in the coin in a, a special spot, either before or after something else, or just part of something in, uh, in the nickname series, they're, they split a name of the supporting goddess or god up into three parts, and they took the Greek name. Why would they get so in, intricate when, when the majority of people would not have any idea of that intricacy at all? And this was not really picked up until the 1800s when a lot of people were collecting coins and they were saying that, all right, I'll collect Probus, you collect Diocletian, you collect Maximianus, um, somebody has that. So everybody was amassing the coins that they, they wanted and, and could study together. And then they saw that this, this thing was happening when they started arranging the coins to the Afakina, they were seeing letters that, that actually spelled out something. So that's what we're looking at here. So we're, we're seeing Probus and the Imperial mantle really caught my eye on this coin because it was so intricate. And then I saw that there was a T on it and the star in the right field. And I knew immediately that this would go go into my collection to improve one of the, the coins that I, I had um, already collected at that point. So upgrades at a very nice spot. Here's the obvious. Now you'll note the uh, do that. Sorry. You'll note the uh, the mantle that, that that is so so intricate on this coin. I hadn't um, ever seen one in the condition this is for me to buy and, and at this point. So that's that's what really caught my eye in the auction. Here's the reverse. Now you, you'll see the uh, the V X X I. The the V was for the uh, uh, the Afakina and the, the XXI is the denomination. And then um, the T, and this one happens to have a star on it. And that star is really what, what dates the coin. Here's a little bit, a larger um, blow up of it. You can see the T real good and the star and the V and the XXI. The date of this brings it to 281 common error and uh, it's, it's from uh, Tinsium, and it's from the uh, Equitai series of Probus. The Equitai series, the Equitai is the date of case of uh, horsemen. And uh, when my wife heard me say that, she goes, you remembering Latin that, that much? <laughs> but um, what it was, in a battle, Probus had won a horse from the the uh, vanquished people, and, and he used that horse uh, in further um, conquest at this point. And, and he was an expert horseman as well at that point. So that's uh, one of the uh, things about collecting. You end up knowing more about um, the different emperors. And there are so many emperors and, and so many things to, to learn about. That's why I sort of concentrated on Probus and Dax, Diocletian and Maximianus because they had these codes and I really like like the codes. So here's the, the full series. It was from 280, 281, and 282 they were made. Two of the, the things were from uh, Tinsium and one was from Rome. There was a, a predecessor from the, the Tinsium one in uh, prior to 280, but there are so few of those I've never been able to find one. So I, anything with them. 
Uh, you can see that they had to abbreviate it in Tensium because there were not enough uh, Afikina. Uh, you got your, your P, your S, the T, the Q, the, the V, and the, the VI, and primus, secundus, uh, tertius. So you, that, that's how they, they were numbered there. And then you, you look at Rome, and they, they use Greek letters, alpha, beta, gamma, from there. But you can see how each one of the Afikina letters in it for the, uh, uh, the word. And um, it, it's just fascinating to me that such intricacy was, uh, was put into coins and, and buried so that uh, somebody couldn't find out and the people weren't literate enough to know what they were looking at at, at the point. And you can see on the, the mantles here, that one is, is a little bit intricate, but not near as, as much as the, uh, the one prior. And this is a typical one that I had seen. Uh, the large coin of the obverse up here matches the T of the uh, 280. And you can see how the flange uh, went out around the, the dentals. And it's, it's very uncommon to, um, to find full dentals on some of these coins. So that's what caught my eye. On. And the, the T star is from the uh, 281 series. And you can see that the one that I have in my collection, by the way, these are all my collection. I won't put a uh, picture out unless they're from mine. I, I don't like to uh, uh, have to guess about uh, at, um, making sure that, that they use the right, right coins. And, and I didn't want to um, give credit and not have it be, be right. So you can see the, the T and the T star in, on that one. And then uh, the one to the upper left with a bus facing right matches two and that just went away. Sorry. And this, that, and we should be able to get it. You can see how the, the flange uh, came off to the, uh, the side on the, on the Z off the Kina, and, and that matches how this one is here. You can see. And, and we already matched this one with a T. So, um, story on auction you get a friend to uh to get you in and you find something that that happens to uh to boost your collection a little bit so any questions i hope i haven't bored everybody to sleep oh no i want to know who's actually really there. cool you're trying to steal my line chip that's my line you can't take that i'm sure you were asleep because you saw this before <laughs> This is beautiful. This is this is just beautiful. Now, um, when I was collecting these, um, a lot of them came from a Harlem Burke store in uh, Chicago. Sure. And it was not because of a lot of trade shows, and I got my hand slapped too for plugging an extension cord. And um, uh, going between uh, hotel and office, I'd always stop at uh, at Harlem's. And a couple of times, Curtis Clay, who was the, uh, the one that I was dealing with mostly because we were both uh, uh, administrative rights on one of the sites. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I told him what I was looking for and he says, well, we're having a, a show at, or a uh, club meeting tonight for the Sh Chicago Coin Club. I said, would you stay? Mm -hmm. You know, you can get supper here because we bring supper in and and then uh, give a little talk on, on why you purchased a coin from us. I said, sure. So <laughs> here I am, somebody from Rochester, not knowing Chicago at all at the, uh, at the show and uh, stopping in and, and having a, a nice. So I did that about three times and it was neat. We had different food each time. Uh, it was Indian food one night and Vietnamese another night. And yeah. <laughs> Something special, you know. It's, a, it's amazing what a what a 
a, a hobby can get you introduced to and the people that you meet. As a matter of fact, Hall and Burke, I got some very nice pieces from him over the years and uh, you know, this brings back good memories. Chip, were the dyes all made in Rome? Um, I think that they sent stuff between uh, mints and each mint had its own dye sinker and, and they did it because there's specific uh, attributes and styling from each one of the mints. Um, see that more in another area that I collect is camp gates. And there's 15 different um, mints, or 16, I can't remember right now uh, which that is. But, um, and you can tell by the, the style of the building on the back uh, by looking at it where, where it was done. And sometimes there'd be a, a, a huge number of uh, um, bricks in the building and other cases there would only be four or five the number of towers on the top and stuff like that. Uh, Chip? Uh, yes? Did Provis have a short ring? Uh, I'm not sure. All I know is that, that these three were in there. I, I'm thinking he had a fairly long reign. Mm -hmm. As the third century was loaded with emperors, a lot of them weren't around for too long. <laughs> yeah. They, they had a tendency to uh, attract the people that wanted to be emperor and <laughs> off them. So. Not a good job. <laughs> no. <laughs> to be at the. <laughs> no. What's, what's the code here? It's E Q U I T I. Equiti. It's, it's the. Um, Susie, help me. What's the AE together? AE in the front is it's like one letter. It's it's a there's a certain name for that, and they shortened it by just taking the A off because there were only six Afakina or die houses at the mint. Um, that's why that that word equity E Q U V. Uh, ITI is shortened in, in Tinsium and it's full in, in, uh, in Rome because there were a, a lot more off Aquina in the Rome mint. That just means a house where, where they were done. So, so the mints themselves would be like Rome or, or would be like Philadelphia or Denver or San Francisco, but then there would be different, different offices within that mint for uh, uh, and they would be assigned either a certain type of coin or a certain um, or season. More, more than one person in the, uh, in the in the manage at that time. But all of these coins were done in Rome in general. No, um, in in this grouping. There, there were actually more done in, in Tinsium than there was in Rome. Where is Tinsium? Um, in Italy, someplace. <laughs> and where is Tinsium? Tinsium. In Italy. Um, I, I've got a map downstairs that um, I did for the camp gates and um, that would, uh, would show me. I, I haven't got it up here. From my hands at this Probably point. right next to Vesuvius. Any other questions? You can you see sure I did this sure in 2003. I put this together, and uh, that was after Susie had uh, done coins in the classroom and. She had gotten uh, grants to get coins brought in to use them for, her, for teaching and stuff. So I thought I'd help her by getting a camera and uh, taking some good pictures and- Created and a monster. <laughs> served me well too. I never thought I'd collect anything other than the US stuff. And now I'm broadening out. Mm -hmm. 
Can you show us the Camp Gates coin again? Because I actually have one, but it, I don't believe it looks much like yours. Um, I don't know if I can pull one up quickly on my computer. Um, why don't we, we go into something else and, and I'll look for it so I'm not taking everybody's time while I'm hunting. I, I've got a couple of show and tells too when we get to that point. I just got a couple uh, uh, submissions to PCGS that came back. Thank you for these, uh, this wonderful presentation, Mr. Scopa. Taught me a lot. Uh, I enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. When you're talking, Mr. Scopa, it's very easy to listen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll stop sharing now and then uh, move on to something else. <laughs>